I, I have a, a question off of what you just said there. Um, with you have some districts that have PE every day and some once a week. Unfortunately, and, and fortunately, we do have this world that we're always looking at test scores, test scores, test scores. Have you guys been able to say mm -hmm. that look, the places that have PE every day have better test scores than the people, than the places that don't? That would be interesting. Yeah, I wish. And we're working on it. We, we, actually <laughs> have a, we actually have a proposal in right now that I can't actually share because it's not available. Like I'm not able to share it yet. But we have we have something that we're looking at that that would be able to uh, um, potentially capture some of that data. Uh, we don't collect any of that data here in Arizona. We collect like school enrollment data. So I can tell you like mm -hmm. what students are in what classes, but we don't have somebody that can actually analyze that data. And so I know that that our universities in our state are working on their own survey methods and their own, um, you know, research to try to make that correlation. But it's not done here at the State Department of Ed or at the state level in Arizona. Yeah, that'd be so interesting just to see your academic oh, yeah. course. Mm -hmm. Wow. Well, and I, and I cool. think the other thing, I think the other caveat to that is sometimes, so, uh, you know, I'm all about health and physical education. Mm -hmm. But but sometimes we have to understand that there are so many outside factors that factor into that besides just health and physical education that, that I, don't, I never want to pigeonhole our profession, right? Sure. I never want us to, to be like, okay, we're making these correlations between A-rated mm -hmm. schools and more physical education. And then when we have schools that have more physical education that aren't getting an A rating, they go, well, then let's just cut PE because it's not working for us. So, you know, it, it, it's, it's a fine line. It's a real fine line you walk there, it, especially because, like I said, there's so many other things that factor in, such as at-home life, poverty levels, um, mm -hmm. the, the, the effectiveness of the actual teacher teaching the PE, right? Are we having the three R's PE or are we having PE like what's happening in your district, right, where it's heavily engaged professional development and resources aplenty and those kinds of things. So they're night and day. So that's that's why I think we, we do just be cautious with that. But do I absolutely think there's correlation? 100%. Yeah, well, you're right. The teacher is that confounding variable that makes the greatest difference, whether mm -hmm. they're going to throw scores or not. You're correct. It's the teacher presence that is the greatest predictor of student uh, growth. Yeah, but you would wonder, though, you know, because we have schools here that are doing a great job with with adding movement. And they're not A schools, but you know what they're showing? They're showing growth. Yeah. yeah. So it, it shouldn't have to be whether you're an A school. It should be, are you showing growth? Because you're right. We can only control so much at school. Yep. Right? And at home and community. Yep. And, and yeah, and income level. But, you know, yeah. this is where I will never forget being told by, I think it might have been... Um, I think it was Eric Jensen that said, we have, we have far more control over our students' um, growth and learning than we ever thought before. Because memories are malleable, the brain changes over time. And the power and presence of a teacher is the greatest factor effect size for student success. That's why I always say, yep. best thing that we can invest in is a quality teacher. That's the best investment for any school district, quality teacher. That is yep. the gift that we give kids, I, the yeah. gift of quality teacher. Well, and that's the awesome part about being at the Department of Ed. I get to provide professional development to teachers to help them become quality teachers, mm -hmm. right? And so uh, it, it's that's an awesome opportunity. And back to the uh, correlation though, between like you said, student growth, right? And how we have an impact on that. That's where we fall into the national level studies. Like we know the CDC research, we know ASCD uh, with the WISC model. Uh, we understand studies that come out like the, the learning readiness, physical education that came out of Naperville. Uh, mm -hmm. We understand right. as a profession, we can prove that, right? Yeah. And so showing that correlation at a school level isn't always vital, but I agree that it can help make, make the cause, right? Like it's really hard for a State Department of Education to say we need more minutes in physical education when we can't show if we actually have effective physical education. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. where collecting that state level data really matters because it helps us as State Department of Educators like advocate at a state level because somebody has to talk to the Arizona legislators. Right? right. And while it can't be me directly, 
if we can compile the information so that somebody else can go have that conversation, that's my role to make sure that they have the most up-to-date, relevant information in what Arizona's physical education and health education programs look like so that we can make that change. Hmm. Yeah, it does make it, it, it makes a lot of sense. And, you you know, the other factor you could always throw in there, like you said, with with your state hiring people who don't necessarily have to be uh, certified. I mean, if you have an everyday PE teacher that's certified versus an everyday PE teacher that's non-certified, how much does that affect, you know, the test scores that building with quality PE versus, like you said, the three R's? So it'd yeah, be another and, factor thrown into everything. That right. Could, yeah. Well, and, and, you know, we also in as professionals tend to think that our certified, our other th certified professionals are better teachers because they're certified. And I can sure. tell you firsthand, that's not true. Mm -hmm. I have seen well, some non-certified physical education teachers that are far better teachers than some certified physical education teachers. And so true. while I think everybody should be certified and have that background, uh, absolutely. But that's not always the be all end all. And that that speaks to that lack of professional development Correct. and just the kind of, I don't know if it's like laissez faire attitude that we have sometimes with our PE teachers. And it also depends on why they were hired, right? Mm -hmm. We all know teachers <laughs> that were hired because of sports they can coach. Yeah. And, and so that that's also feeding into that. You don't actually have to be a good teacher as long as we have the winning sports program. And, and so, you know, I could sit here and talk to you for hours about these, yeah. these big systemic issues, right? But, <laughs> but, but, right, and we know, we, we see it every day. Drop yeah, the money yeah. now. Right, so you know, we need to be the best teachers that we can be. And of course, if we're certified, that's amazing because we've got the pedagogy in the background, but we also need to support our non-certified teachers because sometimes they're doing great things too and they need our help as well because when it boils down, it's about the kids. And so getting the best resources to the people who are working with the kids is what we focus on. Yeah, and that's why it was so important during our speak out day week with Shape America that we advocated for Title II funding. Title II funding, listeners, viewers, that is professional uh, development. So that's where we're advocating for that strong professional development for our non-licensed and licensed teachers. It's critical. That's right. That's again, investing in quality teachers is a wise investment. <laughs>